Hello again everyone, this is Mohamed Yakub, and this is another video on the uh, Nucleo of 4 tutorial series. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use ADC single conversion mode. So ADC single conversion is the most basic one to use. And what it does is that whenever you want to read an analog input, you trigger to the ADC, it will convert the value and it will go to sleep. As opposed to ADC continuous mode that will continuously convert and acquire data. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Uh, and in my demo, I have two analog inputs. I'm using this thumb joystick. It has got uh, two analogs, uh, the X and Y axis. So I'm going to be using these two. Um, so now let's go to Cubemix and set up a new project. Uh, and in Cubemix, as usual, click on New Project. Uh, and select the right board. So let's go to Board Selector, um, um, Nucleo 64 pins, uh, 4, and it's the 0401RE. So this one. Uh, and this is the board pin out by default. Uh, I'm just going to clear all the pins and set them up uh, manually again. So go to pin out and clear pin out. And yes. Uh, first thing I want to enable is I want to enable uh, my LED. So it's on PA5 and set it to uh, analog output. And I'll, I might also want to enable my uh, push button. So on PC13 and set it to TBIO input. Uh, and now to the important part. So I need to enable my ADC inputs. Um, I'm going to use ADC1 for both of the channels. Uh, I'm going to enable channel 0 and channel 1. Uh, and keep in mind here, you can only do one at a time. Uh, because if you look at the ADC uh, diagram, you can see that we can have up to 16 uh, analog inputs. So up to 16 channels from 0 to 15. And we can use one of the three ADCs on the board. Uh, because if you look at QMX, you see that you have... Oh no, that's not the uh, discovery board. So for the nuclear, there is only a single ADC, and you have 16 analog inputs. And you ca you know, you're only allowed to use this ADC. So you have to select one of the channels and tell the ADC to convert the value. And this one can take only a single input. So what we're going to do in today's demo is that I'll first do a single channel, so channel 0, and then I'll show you how to change, how to swap between channels in the code. Okay? And if you didn't quite get what I'm saying here, don't worry much. I'll definitely clear it up when we get to the code. So now uh, let's carry on and let's go to configuration. I'm going to configure our ADC. Uh, so these are the ADC parameters. The most important one perhaps is the resolution. So I want to start up with uh, 8 bits of resolution. Um, if you don't know what ADC resolution means, just watch a couple of 5 minutes videos. They will explain all about ADC's resolution. Uh, but 8 bits, the range will be from 0 to 255, um, and 10 bits from 0 to 1023, and so on. Um, and I'm not using continuous mode conversion, I'll skip all of those. Um, number of conversion, I'll leave it to 1. Um, and from the rank, you can see that channel 0 will be converted first. Uh, I might want to increase the uh, sampling time cycles as well to perhaps 28 cycles. Because this one requires at least 11 clock cycles, so I'm going to set this to 28. Um, and click OK. So that's all we need to do here. Uh, we're ready to generate the source code. So click on Generate Source Code icon here. Uh, and give the project a name. I'm going to call it ADC um, Single Video. Uh, and I want to store it at this location. Select your IDE, MDK ARM V5, and click OK. OK, and once the source code is generated, click on Open Project, and this will take you straight to your QMicroVision IDE. Uh, and now let's start writing the code. So uh, I want to define variable to store my ADC uh, values in. So I'm going to define an unsigned 32-bit uh, variable, uh, ADC, ADC val0 for channel 0 and ADC uh, val1 for uh, channel 1. Okay. So the reason why I defined unsigned 32-bit is the ADC get value return and an unsigned 32-bit value. So that's why I define those uh, this way. Uh, and next thing I want to do is I need to uh, start the ADC in here. So how ADC start? And this one takes a single parameter, the uh, ADC handle type diff. And you would see handle type diff defined at the top by Cubemix. So this is the handle type diff for ADC1. It's called HADC1. Uh, I use the ampersand sign because it requires a pointer to that. And then I will uh, wait for the end of conversion. So uh, hull pull, sorry, hull ADC uh, pull for conversion. 
and this function takes uh, two parameters the ADC handle type div a pointer to that and a timeout I'm just gonna give it five milliseconds should be more than enough uh, and I'll put the if condition if this one is okay then I'm gonna read the ADC value so because this function return a hull status type div if you go to the definition you will see that this function returns this one and this type divs can be either OK or error so I'll check if this one is equal to OK then I'm gonna proceed so this one is equal to hello OK then I'm gonna proceed and get the ADC uh, value uh, and you get the ADC value of the function called hull ADC uh, get value uh, this one and this one takes a single parameter, the ADC handle type diff again, okay? And it returns the ADC uh, red value. I'm going to store it in my first channel variable. So ADC val0, I named it above. Um, yeah, so I'm going to use this to store the value. Uh, and I'll put a little delay here. So how delay, uh, perhaps just 50 milliseconds, okay? Uh, and that's it. So this is for a single uh, channel. So let me compile it, load it to the board, and we'll test this. And then we'll come back and add the uh, second channel. Uh, we'll load it to the board and we'll jump into uh, the debugging mode. So click on this icon to go to debugging mode. Uh, and on here, I need to add my variable to the watch memory to be able to see them. So I'm only using ADC val0, so I'm just going to add this to uh, watch1. Uh, and it has been added here, so uh, I'm going to remove the hex display, I want to see it in decimal and we can uh, start the code oh okay so I can get, I'm getting 125 so this is the middle value now if I change it right or left you can see the value increasing maximum to 255 and then decreasing uh, if I move it to the other side decreasing down to um, uh, 0 so yeah working perfectly uh, and now let me show you how to read uh, from uh, multiple channels so now if you go down to the ADC settings um, you can see in the uh, channel configuration that channel 0 is selected so what I want to do is I want to be able to swap between channel 0 and channel 1 to read two channels um, to do this I need to call this function in my main uh, with this variable that store the configuration uh, but this variable is now defined locally so I won't be able to call it in the main what I would need to do first is to um, take this and define it globally instead so I'm going to define it outside the main function so that uh, everyone can see it um, and now I can I need to call this in here uh, to change channels so so after I get the first uh, channel converted um, sconfig.channel I want to change this to ADC uh, to channel 1 instead okay and then I'll call the function to implement those configuration uh, similar to the configuration function here. Uh, I could have put those in as well, but these by default don't change. Um, I set them once and they will stay in this variable. So I need to call ADC uh, config channel to implement this. Okay, now the channel changed from channel 0 to channel 1. Now all I need to do is to call in this part of the code again. Um, so this one will start the ADC again after I change the channel. Um, wait for the end of conversion and get the value but now I need to store it in variable number one because this one is for channel one so uh, I need to copy these settings again back to the top because after the delay it will get, get back in here and the channel will remain channel one so I need to return it back to channel zero so this one I'm uh, going to be back to channel zero and that should be it so let's compile the code load it to the board and we're going to test in the uh, debugging mode again uh, and on the debugging mode, I just need to add the other variable to watch memory. I've already added a uh, channel 0 variable, but I need to add channel 1 variable too. So add to watch 1. And um, si similarly, I'm going to remove the hex display. And I'll uh, start the code. So good. Both of them start about 1, 2, 5 in the middle. So I'm going to change the first one. Uh, first one is similarly goes from 0 to 2, 5, 5. And now the second channel as well. So... Um, goes down to zero uh, and goes maximum when I scroll it up it goes to 255 so well perfect both of them are working perfectly uh, except the middle value here is 132 but this is just down to the calibration of the thumb joystick okay okay cool 
Um, that's all I want to show you today. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I want to see more videos like this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, thanks, and I'll see you next time. Bye.